the F to the R to the S to the H to the O to the T, that fresh ass. What up? What up? What up? What's good? We have an iconic figure in the building tonight. Sure do. We sure do. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, God Save the Queen's essential history of women in hip hop, baby girl, better known as Aaliyah. There it is. There we uh, go. King, oh, oh, oh. King, oh. There we go. King, uh, there we King, go. Commissary <laughs> Kitchen. I mean, come on, yes. man. The little camera's on deck. I mean, Kathy and Dolly. Let's go. Put some respect <laughs> on the name. There you go. What's please, going on? Please, please, please. Let's drop a bomb real quick. There you go. How, How are you feeling you tonight? tonight? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys? Oh, we're great. Good. Welcome to Wonderful. Out. Splendid. First, we have to start with giving you flowers. Like, I don't think people really understand how serious in the game you are. Mm. Uh, good morning, America. Hot nine. First of all, talk to you, him. You murdered on Hot Nine Seven. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I've never seen Ebro like <laughs> you got Stop. him. Like got him. Put him in yeah. his place. Like he you had to recognize. Like put yeah, some respect did. on this lady's name. Yeah. Like, don't 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 do that. Shut and on hip and on hip hop. Let's be clear on hip hop. Facts. Clear. Facts. Yeah. Well, shout out to Ebro. You know the camera is backwards. I can't stop my my hoops keep going like this. Um. <laughs> No, shout out to Ebro. I think oh, you know I, you're. I'm, you're referencing my Billboard piece. I'm guessing this hip hop yes. stuff mm-hmm. about nine seven. Yeah, you know, I didn't like even fathom being called to go on the show. Really, <laughs> defend my place uh, or my position on questioning that, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah. But when I got there, you know, I think like one thing about Ebro is that like. If you present an argument and you know what you're talking about, oh yeah, with like facts. There's, you know, he's just. I mean, he's an amazing guy. Shout out to him and my dear dear friend Laura Styles and Rosenberg yes. and shout she, out. Um, absolutely. And I think, like, in retrospect, like, yeah, it does still live in Hot 97. <laughs> like yes. back then, I posed that question, like with all sincerity, but you know what? Like, Ebro in the morning holds it down for artists. So Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, salute yeah. to well, I, I think it started sure. with that conversation, though, too, as well. Because you, you made a good point as far as that there was the beginning and the end of the day, and that middle thing was the place where yeah. artists could come in, like, kind of, like, have a ther- therapy session, you know what I'm saying, yeah. to have their side. So I think you did a great job with that, but to start off, like, where did your love for hip hop music? I mean, you're a Jersey queen. Where did where did all this come? Where, where did this come from? You know, I mean, I'm an '80s baby. I'm a '90s teen, so I was what ten years old when Ladies First came out, and I think that okay. was like the first time where. I like, um, I don't know if you guys remember, it was channel 12 for me, but video music box. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So there was only like a two hour window that you could watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It was on like two to four or something like that. Or like, yeah. four right. I can't remember. It was like a two hour window. And I would like, one day I like stumbled upon it. Right. And I like, um, every other day, every day after that, like I would race home to catch like this two hours and yeah, I never at school. Yeah. Yeah, like I never was able to get like the full two hours unless it was like a sick day or a snow day or whatever. Mm-hmm. But that I I have to say, Video Music Box was like the place that like made me just really discover hip hop in a way mm-hmm. that I felt like because you know MTV wasn't doing it at the time in terms of like really putting artists, hip hop artists, um, front and center, right? Mm-hmm. So, and I didn't have the box. That wasn't part of a uh, video music box. No, no, the the box. Was it the box or the one where you can like? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do the request the songs and stuff. Right, yeah, you can request I it and it have like a ticker at the bottom that has yeah, like the, the person requested it. 
Yeah, so I couldn't like request anything, right? Like my my requests were like calling one eight hundred two two three nine seven nine seven for hot ninety seven. Oh yeah, that yeah, was okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. And like trying to get trying to get on um, the morning show, you know, uh, what's up, y'all? What you gotta say? Who's on the phone with Ed Leeson, right? And like I used to be like in the morning, I'd be like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna like I'm gonna rap now. I'm gonna do it. Like, and I, like my, my intro would always be like hard. And then like, by the time I got to, that sounds good. And that may be where are you coming from? You know, what city? <laughs> and like, I just remember being like, man, I can't say Jersey. <laughs> 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 it's all, it's all Lauren Hill. Like, he, there you go. Oh yeah. And I was yep. like, okay. mm-hmm. Which was weird. Cause. Queen Latifah's from Jersey and Lady yeah, like Red, uh, Red Man. This is yeah, a great yeah. artist from, from Jersey. Yeah, it, it was just like for me, I didn't, it didn't connect. And I, and, I got you. Okay. Yeah. So you, now I'm you, proud. I'm proud of Jersey. As you should be. Salute you to know, Jersey. As you, yeah, salute to Jersey. Uh, as Iceberg just mentioned a couple minutes ago or so, your resume uh, when it comes to authorship. When it comes to uh, uh, your periodicals online and just just all all in all is just massive. This is countless and just very rich with information that Ooh. is, I mean, always That's worth work. reading. So with that said, what would you say that you've learned from maybe, say, the, the earlier days of working with smaller media outlets um legendary hip hop individuals and groups like the roots and so forth that mm-hmm. paved the way for your major career breakout mm-hmm. and massive book deals and releases well you know turn my phone down um for one i got my unofficial start working at a record store right like that was my okay. first job yeah. in high school okay and then while I was in college, I got my um, job handing out flyers for The Roots, uh, okay. which in turn led to promoting um, an incredible, you know, uh, like concert series that they had called Black Lily at the Wetlands. Shout out to the Wetlands, RIP. Um, the smaller media outlets, which, which ultimately I got my start by networking with editors on The Roots uh, message boards on OK. okay. I remember so, that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, my name was Lady Mecca. L A D. Okay. Okay. It was okay. The same uh, tag too. So, um, so I got my start there, and the like, I, I was I used to write these like think pieces about like just random shit and hip hop, and like I would like put them on like the lesson or other places on the across the site. And then one day I was like, you know, this this will look nice in a magazine, right? Um, the thing that I'll say about like the smaller media outlets, you know, you're there wasn't as much like gatekeeping back then in, mm, in hip hop. Okay, media. okay. Well, yeah. So you know, when and a lot of times like hip hop artists back then like really wanted to speak with hip hop media, right? Mm, yeah. Now you don't get that as much, yeah, right? right? Yeah. Now it's like, oh, give me my Vanity Fair cover. Give me my Harper's <laughs> Bazaar cover, you know? Right. Um, I just saw Jack Harlow did something with Harper's Bazaar, and it's incredible, right? But yeah, okay. um, but hip-hop artists are no longer supporting hip-hop media. And maybe that's because hip-hop media has changed so dramatically, too, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But back then, there was still, like, a place for you to be able to write about hip hop and speak with the artists and yeah. they care about what you thought about their music. You know, as long as like your rating matched like your information on the album or whatever, and you processed it. And I feel like maybe it was because I was a woman and I, I am a woman. Um, and I had to go the extra mile to prove that I knew the subject matter. You know, I would mm, say, okay. and they would start quizzing me on their albums before the interview <laughs> began. And like, dudes don't ever have to do that, you know? Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Dude, you so walk in, they'll walk in an interview and say, you know, like all that stuff. <laughs> I go in there, they're like, what's your favorite song on the album? Oh, good. What's your favorite line? <laughs> you know? We're um, trying to see if you really know what you were talking right. about. Exactly. 
like yeah. like where what what's you know what what what's your what's your like mission in this right and um it gave me the opportunity to get my reps in and develop my voice and build a strong network you know that through hip hop media is how I met Prodigy you know okay mm. RIP you know, Prodigy RIP baby um, he was I was one of the first interviews when he got out of prison okay right? uh, and um we were sitting down uh we were at dojo over by NYU you know mm -hmm. yeah you know, we're over at dojo and um he he hands me this like massive book and it's like a catalog that like you can order stuff in prison right and it's like all like like bootleg like gucci and like you know uh fake tims and stuff it's like look at this right? yeah, <laughs> give me your, give me your spimbalins yeah right. he had a, a copy a cassette of uh, jada kisses the last kids that okay uh, yeah yeah wow yeah. And he was because you couldn't use CDs because they would break them and use them. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Right. So, which you could technically do with a cassette, but uh, whatever. Yeah, I guess right. strangle you. Um, yeah, and he um and he like showed me this book and and he's like, you know, I've been wanting to write like about um you know prison, but through like the food that I had to eat because you know he had the type um. SS type of sickle cell anemia, and he was, and he right. had to stay healthy. And the prison system is not designed to keep people healthy, right? Right, you right. Know, back, back. It's like a nutritional death penalty. So they go, uh, you know, he he was telling me that he wanted to do this book, and I was like, well, call me, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> a year later, I get a call, yo, cat. <laughs> no, <I'm> like, <laughs> you Real laid back too. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, and and we did it, and and through that, you know, I mean, it was just an incredible friendship that had developed over the years. That you know, that's awesome. There so many other things we had to do, but yeah. it is awesome. Have you tried and any of the recipes? Have that... Oh, go oh, ahead, go ahead, people. No, I was going to say, like, just speaking of of that, she but she also had that collab with um, T Pain. That can I mix you a drink? <laughs> sure do. How yeah. how was that collabing with T Pain? Because I I bought that book and I did not realize when I bought it that you was involved in that. I had bought it as a Christmas gift for somebody who loved <laughs> mixed drinks. That was their thing. So I was like, T Pain got some, and I thought it'd be kind of not not a gag gift, but something kind of right. funny because he had that. Can I buy you a drink song? So I was like, this person really gonna actually feel it just off that. But they ended up really loving the book, and I was jealous because when I seen the book, the hardcover, <laughs> yeah, like it's like something that came out of now you, want it back. you know, like like some real <laughs> leather, like it it was official tissue type book. Mm -hmm, but how was mm -hmm. that collabing with T Pain though? I mean, Pain has been a friend for years, right? So mm -hmm. we had collaborated on like just like random stuff over the years, and he wanted to do kind of like this collection where. He, you know, he's he's always rapping or singing about liquor, and so he wanted to <laughs> kind of draw the line, right? And, um, yeah. and he called me to to do the project, you know, and um, and you know, it's it's funny, like I always like my friends in this industry who are artists. I just I I when I think of them, I think of how they say my name, right? Like yeah. P was always your cat, right? With um, pain is got it. <laughs> right. so, the so boy. Got it. Yeah, and I got the call. Got it. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, and, like, and it was like going through his entire catalog and finding like songs that reflected drinks. Right. That's cool. And then That's we cool. connected with the James Beard award winning, um, award winning mixologist, Maxwell Britton, shout out to Maxwell. And we just put it all together. And <laughs> it's, you know, we have an, we have uh, an NFT, you know, um, mm. just with the drinks and it, it just, it keeps going. Right. There's yeah. other stuff. Yeah. There's a drinking card game coming and, um, That's off the chain. Actually it is. <laughs> Yeah, pain. Okay. I mean, he's an amazing guy, you know. And I'm, I'm just, I'm just thankful that you know, when people think of really good ideas, they think of me to help them like execute them. Well, and that that was a, a great idea though, because 
that's actually popular. I mean, yes, from that book that I bought my friend, like my whole squad mm-hmm. <laughs> like has that book now because of mm-hmm. of that. So it's crazy. I mean, I, I had I had to salute both of y'all for that because that was like a genius idea uh, to to play yeah, off yeah, his was. to play off his talent too. Yeah. And to kind of bring that to light. So yeah. pe- people really do appreciate that, though. I mean, I don't know if, like, anybody's emailed you or somebody see on the streets, like, look, that that book you did with T-Pain, that, I'm, I'm telling Amazing you, though, like, idea. people, hey, my, my homie was like, shout out to my dude, Greg. <laughs> he was like, yo, let her know that book is. <laughs> there, you go, there, there you go. There you go. There you go. Well, and this is the thing. If, if, if you guys are watching, we got uh, about a 150 in the building tonight. Um. If you haven't seen, if you haven't saw it in the bookstore, if you haven't seen it on Amazon, God Save the Queens, the essential history of women in hip hop. Mm-hmm. If you, if you, it, boom, there you go. There Come on, is. product placement, let's go. That's it. If you haven't seen it, women are taking over hip hop, which is crazy. Yeah. 10 years ago, 12 years ago, when I met them in college, uh, 20 years ago, I'm showing my age. Yeah, yeah, and you're really showing our age. Women were in the background. Now it's they the total right. opposite. What yeah. is your take on that? And then, do you kind of consider like the book kind of being a, a predecessor to this movement? Well, first off, I think it's a long time coming, right? I right, think right. That we're yeah. at a point where it's undeniable that women uh, contribute so much to hip hop and in a meaningful Absolutely. way. Yeah. Um, I, when I was putting the book together, the thing that struck me as crazy was that there was no book, right? And there was no history. If you look at hip hop books, right? They they there's usually like one page, right? And yep. they start a in chapter. Like, yeah, if that. They start at like 84, you know, mm-hmm. and then they kind of just like glaze past like and they're just, yeah. they're just crossing over everything, right? Yep. And I didn't realize how much was actually missing until I put the book together and then how much how how many parts of hip hop history were started by women, right? Yeah, I mean right. Yeah. the the infamous party at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue was literally because Cool Herc's sister Cindy threw the party. Exactly, yep. yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Preach. You know, mm-hmm. And and like she's a godmother of hip hop, but you don't really think about that or you talk mm-hmm. about that. And then there's the whole all of the uh, pioneers, the female pioneers that came before 84, you know? Mm-hmm. Shout out to WG, Lisa Lee, Heavily Poo, the Mercedes ladies, the sequence. Come on now. Come on. Let me drop a bomb right? for you. Hold up. Um, to and then you get to 84 where Roxanne Chante and, you know, right. everything changes. But right. there's so much to that history. So when now we're up to date, you know, and the last thing, um, that the last part of my book, I actually spoke with Megan Thee Stallion because I, at the time, I had loved the Tina Snow EP. Yep. Right. So yep. I was listening to that like nonstop and I was like, something is going to happen here. Like, this is mm-hmm. like, I got to get Megan. Right. And mm-hmm. my publisher was like, oh, I don't, you know, they, they were like, even with the whole book, they were just like really razor focused on discussing Cardi B and, um, that was a reference point and, and that's fine too. And, and, you know, Cardi's amazing, but right. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, no, like there's, a, there's, there's more, the, the story's continuing. It's still unfolding. So, you know, I got Meg and it proved to be a good choice because look at Meg Absolutely. Now. Salute um, to Meg. And she just dropped an album last Friday and it's crazy by the yeah. way too. Mm-hmm. Um, oh my God. Amazing, crazy. amazing project. Crazy. I wish you would have dropped it but, in May to have the whole summer popping. Right. Well, now we got her through the fall and the winter and the spring. That's and true. Sure. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yep. Um, but what we're seeing now, so many women who are not being brought in through a man. Facts. And I think that is the change that we're witnessing, right? There is not some like guy who's kind of like introducing the women. So... Yep. That being said, more women are coming in and not being like pushed to the back, creatively speaking. That's not including all the women who are A and Rs, you know, publicists, right. all these women who are who are responsible. 
women who are responsible for the career of men, right? Yeah. And they're women in hip hop or women documenting the culture. They're women mm-hmm. in hip hop. But MCs, rappers, um, right. you know, they're all they're coming in now, but there's no guide be like, oh, hold on there, which is what was happening in the nineties and into the two thousands. What's the and next this is why that- I say too, why I feel like Missy Elliott is like mm-hmm. Mount Rushmore mm-hmm. of hip hop. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. for what she's given to the game and the fact that when she came in the game she's changed sonically of how we think about how everything should sound so missy definitely i mean i i don't know if you could get missy (laughs) to to do a book but man she's on so many people's mount rushmore that I, i i look at her i mean we give a lot of like queen of hip hop flowers to to a very very select few, mm-hmm. but Missy is if, if there's like a a pantheon where we can say like God level, <laughs> goddess level. Yeah, I, I got Missy there. So, I got Missy there. Well, well Kath- Kathy, real quick yeah. before you go and be bold, what's one? What's the next level that you see with women in hip hop? Where's where's one level that you maybe don't see that that you go- that you would like to see more women in that area? I want to see at least three women in hip hop be goaded. We don't mm. never have okay. Mm. okay. And who where do you, you feel like oh, go ahead? I'm sorry. Where they're not calling themselves that and everyone's recognizing that they are that. That I hear from I hear from Kim a lot. I hear everybody saying Kim. I mean, you know. It's hard to argue with that though. It's hard I'm, to Kim, argue. I'm Kim all down team Kim so I mean, you know, (laughs) (laughs) there's, there's no one like little Kim. So I think it's just like there, when you think about what little Kim did for hip hop and fashion and the intersection of hip hop and fashion, and you know, you're talking about a star that this is, this is a star. So, um, yeah, I mean, but, but yes, people recognize Kim as a goat, right? Mm-hmm. Black circles recognize La- uh, Lauren Hill as a goat, you know. Facts, mm-hmm. facts. But it's not oh, yeah. like a, it's not like a proclamation, right? Like they're like it, it's still one of those things that you know. The thing that I always hate is that there's like this like disclaimer, like a caveat, right? Um, where you're like, um, you know, and I'm not ashamed to say it, but and they always like follow with a woman, right? Like mm. and you need to eliminate that. Where it's like when when you're when you're saying who's amazing, you don't have to be like, and I'm sorry, but like that's always how it comes. Like, it's, it's <laughs> right, it's a qualifier there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anybody for the book "God Save the Queens" that you did not get to work with that you really were just yeah, just yeah. itching to do so? And along with that, um, is there anybody um, that you have yet to work with um, that you're Anxious about as well. Just period. Same both Lauren Hill. Mm. There you go. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Can you? Is talk she, to her is she really that? hard to get a hold of, or is it just she doesn't do interviews or anything like that? Um, I think it's a combination. I, I you know, Miss Hill is incredibly private, and I mean, we're Thanks. she's coming yeah. back out into um, the industry. That, I mean, her verse on Nas is nobody. Oh, crazy, cool. crazy, <laughs> crazy. Bananas. Um, and, I, and I actually got to see the Fugees um, in September when they uh, were in New York City before the tour got canceled. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, that first show. Now they, now, they were at the Essence Festival, right? They were at the Essence Festival. Two of them were. Uh, Two of them were. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, no. oh yeah. Do you have any uh stories or thoughts about her? Because I know you wrote an article about uh that album, This Education Turning 15, I believe. Uh, so you definitely have experience with um, you know, in writing about Lauren Hill. So are there any stories that you could share? Um, maybe surrounding the experience of Lauren slash the Fugees, even though you didn't get to meet her personally. Um well, or- no, I met her. Oh, you did? Okay, okay. Um, So, oh my gosh. I, 
I've, I'm like a fan first, you know, I mean, that's mm -hmm. why this is, you know, there, <laughs> I just, let me just get that out there. So okay. I was supposed to see Lauren Hill perform. Well, okay. Oh my gosh. There's so many, there's moving parts to this. So first of all, 1998. Yeah. 98. Okay. Uh, I hear like, um, it was the day that Lauren Hill premiered Duop that thing on Funk Master Flex's show. Okay. So I call up Hot 97 because I need to, like, I'm like, I need to talk to her. Like, I have to, I have to do this, right? It's like, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, right? <laughs> um, so I finally get through and I'm like, and they're like, you know, Hot 97. And I didn't even hear them tell me I was a 97th caller. And I was like, is Lauren there? <laughs> no, this is it's pre recorded. Oh, um, she left and she won tickets to Budweiser Superfest. And I go, What's that? And they're like, A concert. And I was like, Who's all going? And they gave me like this whole list L um, LRG. And I was like, Who else? Right. And they said, Missy and Tim. And I was like, Oh, that means Ali is going to be there. So, long story short, it was my ability. I, I went and then Ali showed up as a special guest. So, I got to see Ali. Oh, concert. wow. Oh, um, that's okay. Crazy. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. But then I was like, all right, no, I'm going to I'm gonna meet Lauren Hill in some way, shape, or form. So, I buy tickets to Lilith Fair in Hartford, Connecticut. Okay. I drive three hours to Hartford. She cancels. Ah. Uh. So, now I'm at Lilith Fair and there's no Lauren Hill. So, August 25th, 1998, Miss Education of Lauren Hill drops. I go right to the Virgin Mega Store, wait on this long line for Lauren Hill, and I get to the desk. She's sitting behind the desk. She was pregnant. And I walk up, and I was like, I went all the way to Hartford, Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say the same thing. And she goes, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like it, it's okay. <laughs> right? So what's your name? And I was like, Kathy. And she wrote, like, I have it hanging up in my office. Like, she wrote, okay. like, to Kathy. And I was the only one she put a name on. It was just, she, wow. she wrote, love Lauren Hill, love Lauren Hill. And I was like, can I shake your hand? And she's like, you know, and of course. So I, like, shake her hand. And I was like, Ugh. right? <laughs> so, I walk outside. Yeah. And I almost get hit by a cab as I'm walking. Mm. Like, imagine like that being like my story, like the headline. Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Me, Lauren Hill, then boom, yeah. bam. Go. The teenager dies after meeting Lauren Hill. I mean, right. it tracked, but it was still like, oh my gosh. So I, that was the first time I actually met her. And okay. That's literally up. that same year, I met Lil Kim. So mm, it was a okay. mm. year for me. <laughs> now, no, great now this is the thing. You're doing a book on Kim. Mm -hmm. How is it working with her? Because again, I'm Team Kim. Yeah, been a Kim, been a Kim fan. Yeah, she's been connected to my guy Big J. I mean, she's she's walking hip hop history. Yes. You know what I'm saying? How is it? How is her personality? How like you know? Do you, do you, I mean? I would be around to get goosebumps. So me too. I'd be standing. I mean, yeah. that's what I'd be doing. Yeah. It's <laughs> Hard not to. I mean, I've I've known Kim a very long time. You know, mm -hmm. we had a, a mutual friend and prodigy, right? Um, Back. Yes. Yeah. You know, I unfortunately was on a cold when prodigy passed to break to yeah. tell her. You know, so uh, there. Kim is one of those people who, I think that, you just don't realize how much power. Is in such a tiny person. Thanks. Um, and hearing her stories and hearing her talk, I always I found myself just being like, oh, "There you <laughs> go. Like, there you go." Her stories, like I'm just like sitting there and I'm like, "Let's look at him," you know. And you, mm -hmm. she's just she's an amazing person. She's an amazing human. Incredibly talented and and she's just she's lovely and i think like <clears throat> developing a friendship with her through the creating like creation of this book i think was like rewarding i mean you know you don't sign up for these things hoping to make a friend right, right. um 
but that's what I I got, and I'm and I'm just really lucky because yeah. Well, the, the the book drops in 2024, and it's it's I, I know it's gonna be a banger. It's gonna be crazy, mm. and it's everybody's be, excited. It's gonna be earlier than that. It's gonna be earlier than that. That's all okay. I'm good. Say. Okay. 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 Well, yeah, I, pre, I, I pre ordered mine, so you know that's, I that's good mine. news. Good. You know what I'm that's good news. Yeah. Amazon, Amazon can be on one sometimes with those releases. <laughs> yeah, I can. Though. 2025. Yeah, yeah they I'll be know. scanning. I baby scanning girl came Amazon. back like four different times. I was like, wait, what's going on? And then I realized like you just can't yeah. book release dates on, on sites like that don't behave like album release dates, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. What's the main thing that if there was like one like heavy hitting message or theme that you want people to get out of God Save the Queen, what is it? Um, Not to be like corny you know no um, i think it's just that the ladies have always been first that's one okay. thing that i think yes. that um, that is really just a central message the, the the goal of god save the queens beyond just telling the story you know when, when i when i got started i didn't realize i had to tell 40 plus years right of history i mean yeah. hip-hop beyond that it was for almost 47 years if you're talking you know hip hop turning 50 next year so yeah know, right yeah you're yep. talking four decades so the one thing that i wanted to make sure people understood was how women in hip hop had consistently moved the needle that allowed everything else to happen you know and we don't think about these things right you don't think about how Cindy Campbell through the party of 1520 Cedric you don't think about how Roxanne Chante changed hip hop by coming, getting on the radio, what what her Man. presence did. You yes. don't think about how um, the battle against uh, between her and Busy B was rigged, and what it would have meant if she actually won like she was supposed to. Yeah, mm -hmm. people sleep yeah. on that. People sleep they on sleep, that. Yeah, they sleep on that story. For real. Yeah, you don't think about how Missy Elliott was um, the first woman entrepreneur to own her own hip hop label. You know, when uh, Sylvia Rome <laughs> an imprint, you don't think about these things, right? right? Um, you don't think about how Queen Latifah, you know, I, you know, shout out, rest in peace to Biz Marquis, doing combining rapping and singing, but you don't really think about like Queen Latifah being the person to first rap and sing, you know, mm -hmm. and Lauren she Hill really was, though. being the one <laughs> yeah. to master it. And the reason why we have like Drake and all the artists thereafter who combine those two things and are still considered hip hop. Right. Right. Um, so, and you don't think about how Lil Kim was the first hip hop artist to be recognized by high fashion. You had Alexander McQueen who like bowed before her when he saw her. Yep. Blessed mm -hmm. the bars. Yeah. Yeah. yeah bars. High fashion, those fashion houses were racist as fuck back then and still are, you know, still in different ways. You yeah. had Lil Kim who went, past like all of that and became a muse to these people so you don't think about how that like like little little kim being in high fashion is the reason why you had like asap rocky being able to walk do runway shows or anyone be, like it's her right but there's a there's a common theme right of women doing this and letting men in and we always just imagine that it's men giving women the chance Right. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. Not how it went down. Right down to the very first party. <laughs> gotcha. It, it, first of all, if you love these stories, Bars. if you're watching right now, you love these stories. If you're watching live or the or the, uh, the replay, if you love these stories, you have to get the book. You do. You have Got to get to. the book to hear these stories because you're not going to hear them anywhere else, Thank honestly. You. Especially in that in in one place. So Speak again, yeah. You gotta yeah. get the book. We're actually Definitely putting a link support. in there now in in the, in, the, in the live chat. So absolutely. And uh, real quick too, um, kind of a follow up question: What's the one book that you still have yet to write that's in your mind and your heart that the audience that you would like to share with the audience, but yet hasn't come into fruition yet, uh, hasn't been started yet? You know things. You know factors of that nature. I you know it's like the same answer: a, a book on Lauren Hill. Okay. I, okay. Um, you know, there. I've kind of toyed with the idea of like writing my own stories of like you know essays of being in hip hop uh, because I have a million stories. I mean, I'm 
rounding out like 24 years in this now, right? Um, 25 years. So I have my own stories, but I'm, I don't think I'm done telling uh, the stories of the people. Not that I'm not saying I don't matter, but the people who matter, you know, like, but for me, a Lauren Hill book, a, a book that is kind of like a comprehensive guide to what Lauren Hill did for hip hop mm-hmm. and yeah. um, what her lyricism did. I, I would love to decode Lauren's lyrics. And I don't think people just realize what a brilliant producer she is, too. And, and so Absolutely. You just I don't, don't think they understand how great of an MC she was because they know they know, yeah. the, they know the singing, MC. but defecating oh, on the yeah. microphone, like everybody's like, ah, yeah, yeah, like yeah. What yeah. Said, like, ah. It went crazy. Yeah. My favorite. Yeah. What do you want folks to get from you ultimately as Kathy? We 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 talked about your works, but what would you like folks to know about you or to understand about you through your works? Um, that my heart is in it. That I think that's my only driving force to even tell these stories is it's all heart and I guess a little bit of mind, right? But this this my my work didn't happen because I like to write. I mean, I did like to write, but this work is because I love hip hop culture and I'm I'm fortunate enough, you know, all music is black music and I and I overstand that right Mm -hmm. but um being given the opportunity to document these stories of incredible black artists being being given that opportunity it's an honor to do that but it's all heart on this side you know it's just a love for the storytelling and being able to shed light on the stories that so many people overlook or don't tell give the panoramic view of like what actually happened you know we we get we're in a world of like 15 second tiktok clips we've been living in that world for quite some time right. yeah well, and it's yeah. going to get worse it's going to get way worse it's yeah. only now that we're learning how to monetize it right yeah. yep. but you know and that that might have been the reason why we didn't get a full book you know until 2019 but I know someone's reading it and you know if you look at my chapters as TikTok clips and do what you got to do but I just had to make sure that these stories were told you know and and I tell them in in different uh, mediums now you know from podcasting to documentaries and film and television and because these stories need to be told you know you can't Absolutely. You can't just let them go and not be just revealed there there's so much but I'm just, it's just, you know, it's from the heart. That's all I can say. As it should be. And we, we, we wanna we wanna that. see the story. We we a hey, Viacom, Paramount, whatever you call yourself nowadays. We got the Kathy give her a deal so she can start putting these on, we need on, to see on it. TV. We need to see it. We want Kathy to be our eyes and ears of all this. And that's this that's is the thing we gotta do too. We gotta do this too. And I don't know if they're if they're the same list. Cause we talked about that goat list of the of the women, but we gotta know your top five since you've touched so many people. Over your career, if it's the same, it's the same. But if not, we got we got to do the top five, and is it we got to do the goat list if they're not the same? Oh no, you're gonna get me in trouble. I'm gonna say that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're on the hot seat right now. And the oh. is, is every every woman to to touch a mic because in some way they changed me. Okay, okay, so I'm actually doing a top four because top number one is uh, any woman to touch a microphone. I can't. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Um, Salute. Salute. Number one, always and forever. Um, Andre 3000. That's why I'm Cap right now. Ooh, always okay. and forever. Okay. Okay. Facts. Um, Prodigy. Rest in peace. Uh, definitely. Yes. Yes. Uh, Black Thought. Uh, okay. uh, people sleep Rushmore. on Black Thought. Got cheat codes. Mount Rushmore. Ooh. Cheat codes. Black and, Thought's uh, not fair. And Jada Kiss. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Kissed one yeah. last year. He did. He did. <laughs> yeah, that versus. Yeah, he put he yeah. put New York back on the map. Come on now. He really he did. did. He, he did. carried New York last year. Mm-hmm. That list rotates. Like I, you know, there you you ask me tomorrow, it may be like Biggie J Nas, you know, like. But thousand uh, <laughs> will always be at the top for me. But um, right now, right today. <laughs> It, it is uh, that list because I've been, you know, I've been bumping the Black Thought uh, and uh, the last project. Like, oh my god, um, and Black Thought's a problem. Yeah, mm-hmm. 
And I was listening to the artist storytelling for you remember that one? Um, now mm-hmm. I'm watching a fine ass walk to the mm-hmm. kitchen. I'm looking at my kitchen. I'm looking at my kitchen. <laughs> um that yeah. yeah i was just listening to that but he, he's always my top you know so, hey that's a respectable yeah. list right there and w- what's the go what's the go woman list don't do it nope 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 <laughs> too late too late kathy oh well, okay 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 let's do this let's, let's do this let's do this kathy <laughs> hey, let's let's do this. What is your what's the t- as of today? What's the best album of the year so far to you? Album of the year so far to you? Yes, so far, so far. As of August twenty twenty two. Hold on, I'm going on my Apple Music real quick. Yeah, let's do yeah, 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 yeah. Do what you need to do. I will. You know, no, I'm. I don't really like need to do this because the Black Thought uh, project. Um, yes, it's Chico's, a problem. This is uh, fierce. Yeah, yeah, Chico's. that that's yeah. Uh, that I, I can't. That there's really no competition. In that. Bananas. Like, I think people don't understand. That's an instant classic. If you haven't got that on your uh, on your playlist, put it on your playlist. We just oh, yeah. Black did, Thought did and a, Danger Mouse to it on Saturday. It's amazing. Yeah. Black yeah. Thought and Danger Mouse. Get that today, like now, yesterday. Yeah. Get it. Like, shout out to my girl kid sister who's on um, a track on the album too. And I'm just yes, you know, I'm yes. So happy yeah, yeah. That, yeah, and, and she's in God Save the Queens too. J. Kemp, ask the last question, but I got one more. Uh, my favorite girl group right now is Girl Code out of New York, but obviously you're tapped into more than we are. Who's an upcoming uh, woman, girl group, that uh, artist that you're seeing that you really, really like, that you're really, really feeling right now? Um, Ice Spice. Ice Spice out of Bronx. Okay. I, I, uh, she's hey, she, got a, she got a shout out from Drake just now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. oh my gosh, like, uh, amazing, amazing. She's just like her, and you know, that song, I guess, is like, you know, new, like Bronx Drill, but you know, she makes yeah. so much yeah. other music. But um, Ice Spice, my girl Flo Millie, she's, uh, okay. yeah, I mean, you know, you know, Flo Millie is just, she's incredible. Um, who else? Who else? I, uh, I mean, People, people know Lotto, and I'm just so proud of her and, and her mm-hmm. moves. Now. That's what's up. Um, she's got a song with Meg on um, Meg's album. Uh, it's a dope yeah, song. She does. Yeah. yeah, stand yeah. up. Koi Lerae. I love Koi. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're talking like artists who like just got started, um, well, she didn't just get started, but just came into recognition, Ice Spice for, for sure. Yeah. Okay. And, and what about some artists who's kind of gotten lost in the shuffle? When I think of those female artists, I think of Rhapsody. Mm-hmm. I think of Remy Ma. Rhapsody's like one of my favorite female artists right now. I mean, I don't care what nobody say. I, I have to she say, killed I that, she killed qualified. that premiere joint. She killed the premiere joint. But just people slept on her album. Her last I album mean, to me was album of the year yeah. that year. She is a beast on the mic. And she just does. She does not get the respect due. Period. Maybe it's because the type you know, of music that she's making. Because she's she's a she's a bar. I call her a bar mitzvah. <laughs> you know, she, <laughs> she's, she's heavy on the bars. Yeah. Maybe people don't like that right now. But I'm an '80s baby. That's what I grew up on. Mm-hmm. I, I have to have a get off my line segment right now. I'm I'm sorry, <laughs> but her bar game is official. That's what I like, and I feel like Rhapsody does not get. The respect that she just deserves heavy but anyway who, who's those artists that you feel might be lost in the shuffle right now you know i mean rhapsody and, and shout out to my sister rap but she does she i feel like and i'm not like you know i'm not like being preachy about it but like when we use the word like slept on it it, it almost like continues to push them push the artists further back. You know, mm-hmm. Rap was Grammy nominated. You know, she's showing up yeah. everywhere. Yeah. She's in documentaries. She's collaborating with everyone. She is out there. But I think it's because 
so many, there's so many artists out that I think like we forget that we're now in an environment where there's an artist getting signed every five minutes, right? That's true. And Rhapsody is an extension of the family tree of Lauren Hill and MC Light. And I think that no one is. Exactly. I guess I should say commercially. Commercially, she's not getting the love I feel that she deserves. Commercially. I mean, she's respected, but just on the commercial commercial level. Commercially, we are not pulling pushing lyricists forward in any gender. Right. So that's what we're what we're kind of witnessing is we're not like we're not getting and that's why I'm really thankful for you know the Black Thought and Danger Mouse project like hopefully that brings the lyricism back. Hopefully. <laughs> now we're not we're not we're not in the intricate wordplay era, you know. Um, we're no. still in we're still in you know thoughts and feelings and that's wonderful too but uh rap you know and rap does that too but you know rap her music i think goes over a lot of people's heads and i think that's Fact, where yeah, yeah. yeah appreciate it um other artists who got lost in the shuffle i mean i don't i don't know i i mean i think you know um rem rem and rap collaborating on that primo project yeah but, oh, yeah that that song is incredible you're talking incredible. two different corners and mm-hmm. so i think like there's a lot of artists who right now are just waiting for their moment there right. I, I i feel i feel like if you it, it's bigger than having a hit like we, there I, when i was like looking at the billboard chart recently i was like these these albums are selling because I'm right. I'm, like, I'm like wired for you know you have to like walk over to a store and buy the album and that was that's your our, that's our era that's smell, our era. smell the inside paper yeah. I, need, I, need to, I need to see yeah. who produced it yeah. I need to see yeah. who the writer was all day yeah. I want to see the yeah, engineer the metrics, on it the metrics are jacked now back in the day a million people had to walk to a record store and, and buy, buy the record. Physically buy it. For it's yeah. platinum. Now, a, journey, a so million yeah. people, a million times, the, the album has to be played. That's it. Like, or, that, you know, or, you know, the, the just accessibility. Like this. Just like yes, that. That's it. <laughs> so, <laughs> the metrics have changed. You know, there's the willingness to actually go and actively support an artist is done now you know for one small fee you can keep going but we had right. to pay 1699 1801 plus tax with tax Man. yeah yeah that Sam whole album. Mm-hmm. Right. where i worked yeah yep. texas brown sugar said we had to wait in line outside for the album exactly yeah exactly <laughs> yeah and you, may, and you may not get one right that's true too what about the release days where there are five albums that came out that's an 80 dollar day for you yeah yeah, yeah. ninety dollars yeah. tax. Yeah, you know, if you, mm-hmm. there were five mm-hmm. albums that you really liked, you had you to had to get all of them. Yeah, yeah. Or you had yeah. to have so, you had to have a homie, which you say you get you this one, to. I'll get that one, yeah. and then y'all kind of yeah. share yeah. share <laughs> yeah. share yeah. listening to it. We yeah. used to walk. We used to walk to the store in college. Me and Simply Marvelous, hot, cold, didn't matter. We was mm-hmm. we was there on Thursday when mm-hmm. when the albums dropped. We was there. You had to buy the, what about buying the single first? So you spent four yeah. hours on that. The max, the single, the maxi right. single. The, yeah. The, maxi single, the EP oh and then the album. And then the imports. I a lot of one hit wonders flip the game that way. They'll drop yeah. their single first, <laughs> like Domino. <laughs> here we go. Right. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right, he dropped his single yeah. first, and then he dropped the album. We was like, yeah. "Come on, bro!" <laughs> I know, but Super Santa Pie was a good follow up to Ghetto Jam. My I, so, 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 so. It um, wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad follow up. I think about on the other group. I have, I have so many cassette singles and CD singles. Oh, I have a thousand of them. Mm. Remember Still Question, my mama's house. Question Mark Asylum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Asylum. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, love yeah. question mark. And they had they they first single was blazing. They look away, and then that other one. You Man, that look away, look, look away. Look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then there was a uh, college boys song called college Rolling. Boys, nope. I had yeah. I had all those cassettes. Mm. Like yeah. <laughs> I had Quo, the two bald head dudes. Oh, I had, yeah, well, that, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. From Quo was uh, Wade Robeson, the um, the guy, yeah, with the, okay. the choreographer, dancer, and then I the didn't know that. Quo was I didn't know that either. Uh, mm-hmm. 
Nice. Some, well, and this is the thing. Nice. Do you see what you coming from the label? You know, obviously, I was born in 79, so we was buying tapes, CDs, all that. You went through, you saw artists go through the labels, you know, whatever, whatever. Do you see them now? Where do you see the industry going? Since the metrics are messed up, uh, you get in these crazy, goofy deals that you're paying five people before you get paid. Um, do you see people doing more of this or going back to labels because they need the push? Because now you can't be your local guy in St. Louis, have a hot song, and then go on the radio BDS, and now you got a deal. Like you have to go through the labels to get on the rec on the radio station now because they're owned by wh whoever, and you can't get on unless you're on a label. I I talk to a lot of artists right through mm -hmm. my media coaching career, and um, you know I talk to them when they're famous, and I talk to them when they just got their deal and they're getting onboarded. Uh, and the one thing that I'll tell you is that the major label system has regained its sex appeal, its sexiness to the artist. Okay. okay. We, went, we went through a period of time where labels were, you know, the antithesis of an artist's career. Right. And, and we watched so many, not so many, we watched several artists independently do their thing, you know, Macklemore, um, Chance Currency. the Rapper. Russ. Yes. Russ, um, but Russ had two deals. He had he was signed to Columbia, and then he had his independent deal. And now I think he's still doing. He's back to independent. But mm -hmm. these are rare occurrences. And I think what was happening was we were taking these success stories, and we were allowing them to dictate our whole opinion of how music is absorbed and marketed and out in the world. And and I think like. The fact that w there are giants now, uh, distribution giants like Empire, to mm -hmm. still give people, to give an artist um, a theoretical deal, right? Like there's still a there, it's a deal structure without being, you know, Empire is probably like the most independent major label, right? But um, so even when you're indie, you're not actually indie because you have like a giant pushing your stuff forward. You have a building um, behind you. have a building behind you. Right. Absolutely. And I think that has allowed labels to once again get their sexy back or Timberlake. Mm -hmm. Like they're like, there's <laughs> the ability, uh, you know, you'll talk to artists now who are who are now back in the, the zone of like, I can't believe I have a major label deal. I'm signed to here. Like, and I also think it has to do with, um, Labels employing more A and Rs who actually care, you know, as gotcha. opposed okay. to two years back, you know, and, and I mean even in the nineties, remember who's your A and R a mountain climber who plays the electric guitar? Um, <laughs> <laughs> a a yeah. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you know, the A and Rs are like slide in DMs, and um, the other thing is managers are getting deals, like they're getting little imprints, and they're able to bring in. And talent and under the major umbrella. So you're you go to like a major label and there's like 30 different little labels that are coming and it's 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 back to what it was when I worked in the major label system. I was in, I worked in major labels in like 2006 and then for a good 10 years it was not that right. And then mm -hmm. I think that has returned. So the re the concept of a record deal, while confusing as it always was is still very much sexy in the eyes of the artist. Gotcha. Yeah. We definitely appreciate having you on here tonight on Fresh Out. Uh, what is one thing that you would like to uh, lead the audience with um, as we close out this wonderful interview that we've had with you, Miss mm -hmm. Kathy? Yeah. Um, you know, not to be plugging whatever, but um, my no, no, go, go ahead, go no, ahead, no, no. Get, your, get your plug on twenty third. Uh, the paperback edition of Baby Girl releases, so okay, um, you okay. know, material. I hope yeah. that uh, one grabs a copy, and um, you know, we don't, we don't, we never, never give enough credit to Aliyah, and uh, we don't, we really uh, don't. You want to talk about a woman who 
was a trailblazer in music and never gets recognized for her contributions in a way that she should have. This is, she is, um, she is the one. So, well, like you said too, it was it, when she passed, 9-11 just hit right after. So never, nobody ever got to really that. mourn it mm -hmm. and talk about it. Yeah, couldn't process it. And, right. you know, this is, and, and there's a lot of synchronicity with, you know, I mean, Prodigy was good friends with Lil Kim. Lil Kim was good friends with Aliyah. Um, and I'll, I'll leave you with this. The next project that I have, there's synchronicity there too. So mm. I'll just. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Teaser. Got a teaser in there. Teaser. We got there a teaser. Go. There you go. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what, Kathy, your tenure in the industries of journalism, authorship, and mm -hmm. urban contemporary music is nothing short of amazing. amazing. You have several books, uh, countless online periodicals, mm -hmm. and a pretty sol solidified stance, to say the least, toward allowing hip hop and rap artists to have a voice through your literary work. Yeah. And for that, we here at Fresh Shot would definitely like to salute you for Absolutely. all your past your present and soon to come future endeavors, yeah. you know, just moving forward toward that, that hallmark. So we and, thank and can so folks, uh, can folks pre-order that, that Leah book? Yeah. That paper yeah. Book? It, it actually, it comes out next Tuesday, so you can pre-order it right now. Um, I mean, there the hard part about the paperback is, um, has some new information yep. um, that's been updated okay. in this past year. Uh, and okay. And, like, and I, I don't think you're going to see a lot of numbers on it because they finally put a music on streaming now. Finally. <laughs> so, yep. Right. Yep. thank yeah. you, Black Ground. Thank you, Black yep. Ground, for putting that out. You got to buy a t shirt and a merch. You need to go buy the book now. Yeah. Yep. 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 Oh, yeah. Where can people find you at? Uh, at 1000 KTH3000 across all platforms. I awesome. Keep it Again, uh, Kathy, we love you. We love your work. Um, you know, there's a lot Absolutely. of there's a lot of wh whether it's black, white, brown, whoever. There's a lot of culture vultures, and so you are one of those people who are really representing not only the artist but the culture, past, present, future. There's, what in, we want. in my opinion, you're one of one, and we just okay. want to salute you. And that's why we wanted you. You're the, you're the first woman on our platform, and we wanted you yes. to be our first. So we really appreciate that, and we just love you. So again, go cop her books. If you haven't if you haven't cop copped a Kathy book, please go do it. Like you, oh will yeah, not be disappointed. Oh yeah, the writing is so superb. It's a one, and again, like I know you you cover iconic things, but to me, you're so legendary in what you do. And we just yeah. appreciate you and want to give you your flowers. So yeah, I, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love what you're yeah. doing. I mean, it's it's really it's a big deal to be a woman coming on a podcast of all men and not feel like you're coming in on the defense, right? Right. Like mm -hmm. uh, that's something that um what you're what you're doing with your platform um is just incredible. Your your knowledge and your care for the subject matter is, you know. I'm, I'm really, thank you. I mean, it's an honor to be, to be on here, but you know, uh, like appreciate it. More, yeah. more people should take notes from your playbook. I'll just say that. Yeah. We definitely it. appreciate those kind words. Yeah. And, uh, we, you know, we definitely want you to feel right at home whenever you decide to come back next time. Well, yeah. We hope you do. Yeah, we hope you do. <laughs> I'll yeah. bring Kim with me. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Kathy. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I said, I'll bring Kim with me. Hey, okay. Hey, there you go. Oh, there you go. I might pass I, out if uh, I'm, <laughs> thing, I'm so interested in that King of New York too. We got to talk about that at some point this year too. Oh my god! Okay. Okay. So we, I, I, I'm so that's so dope. I want to talk about. It. We just got to talk about that like for 30 minutes one time. Well, I'll give you. I'll give everyone a, a quick breakdown um, just before I go because um, the, we're redoing the cover. Um, Okay. I'm writing okay. my first fiction book. It's called King of New York. You're the first to actually hear um, me saying it out loud. Yes. Um, it's actually the, it's a mafia story. You know, I'm Italian, but it's a mafia story where um, for the first time ever, uh, a mafia uh, capo seeks out the help of other organized crime or um, uh, um, crime families from mm. the BMF to latin kings Ooh. so it's the first, the first kind of like intersection of all organized crime where they have to come together okay with 
one goal. So um, it's coming out next year. And uh, King ah. Center, the, the same publisher who released T Payne's book and and um, Prodigy's Commissary Kitchen. So yeah, I I'm taking a stab at fiction, and we'll <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But we're uh, gonna be looking forward to that. I need, I'm excited I need for it. I saw life. I saw the cover. I was like, oh yeah, we got to. That's, that's a whole another. That's a whole another. Podcast, that's a whole different situation. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. shout out to Julie, but I need that. Uh, and, and get the get the real stories of uh and, and consult my dad. <laughs> yeah. <on them>. Mm. <laughs> but, like, mm. it's, it's probably your, it's going to be your most accurate mafia book. <laughs> okay, hey, okay, hey, okay. I need that. Yeah, we need it. Oh yeah, yeah. Need it. That's going to be Kathy yeah, and Dolly, uh, iconic journalist. Right, yes. the, the coolest chick ever. <laughs> like, fast. You, like I said again, we got to give you flowers again. Like, um, one of one. The books are amazing. Again, if you haven't stepped into her world, step into the world. And honestly, again, Do it. grab all these titles. It's all so them. crazy. All these you got to get. Like I said that little Kim's all coming. Yeah, right, no, there's more than this. That she's got more. I couldn't even fit them on here. So, and read her online articles too. Yeah. Articles Facts. are crazy. There's more again. than you can count on there. Yeah. Again, like I said, Kathy, we just love you again. Fresh out, J. Kemp, Bebo P, LB, the Podfather's not here. He's uh, got, he tore his MCL, but, you know, yeah. he wanted to meet yeah. you too. But again, you know, when you get a new house and you, and you put stuff together, you fall on stuff, man. So again, shout out to LB, and the Podfather. You get, you get older. Yeah, you get <laughs> yeah, older yeah, and you yeah, don't yeah. heal as quick either. So. <laughs> Yeah, I but appreciate. Again, like, I'm sure appreciate that, and uh, we can't wait to yeah. see you and uh, <clears throat> Lil Kim next time you come <clears throat> to Fresh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I'm about yeah. to bring out that picture back out of my wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna like pass out when that, when, that, when that happens. If I see Kim, yeah. I, I, all I have to do yeah. is see her silhouette, and I'm gonna pass out. I'm gonna you. <laughs> no, I'm gonna but I'm gonna start doing that then. <laughs> So. <laughs> Many thanks, though, Kathy. Yeah. We we def we kindly appreciate you being mm -hmm. with us tonight for the first time. Absolutely, and rocking with us. And rocking with us. Hey, Amen. Uh, another great episode again, Kathy. Bless us with some stories, some unique stuff. But again, catch us next Wednesday or catch us tomorrow, nine thirty. Tomorrow. Got today's Tuesday. Catch us tomorrow, nine thirty. We'll be on here. But again, Kathy, J. Kemp, Bebo, P. L. B. The Pie Father, man. We out. Yeah. Great episode. Again, thank you, Kathy, so much. Thank you. Peace.